Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we are back with an Ash updated complete guide for patch 5.2c. Um, we've just done one actually like I, I believe less than a week ago on patch 5.2b but obviously the situation has changed. Uh, we have, you know, a uh, reworked shield bow and a reworked lethal tempo. Uh, but of course before we get into any of it, don't forget to check out Ash's basic guide that I'll link up in the cards above for her skills, leveling order tips and tricks as well as a couple of combos. But um, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So obviously now uh, you can see we have lethal tempo as our rune which gives us attack speed no longer having pressed the attack which means we don't need that much attack speed in our build anymore because a lot of the attack speed is going to come from the lethal tempo. So I've actually taken the... Um, Phantom Dancer out of the build and I've put Shield Bow in. But what I will say is that Ash's build I think is pretty variable. So let's get straight into it. I believe that Ash only has three core items if you include the boots. So boots is basically your first core item. You're gonna go for the Gluttonous Grease for the damage as well as the Omnivamp. Uh, you technically could also go for attack speed boots if you prefer that, but I think you already have enough attack speed from Runans together with your Q, so I don't really think you need that. I think Gluttonous Grease is going to be better. Then, of course, you go for Bloodthirster first item as usual because it gives you pretty much the most AD out of all, all the uh, items uh, if you include the passive and, of course, the, the uh, physical vamp as well. And then your second core item is going to be Runans Hurricane, which, of course, allows you to attack three people at once, which is really critical for Ash, which... Uh, of course, not only uh, um, you know amplifies her damage by the fact that she attack is attacking three people at once, but also of course allows you to apply the slow onto three people at once. Also, of course, deals uh, your on hit damage as well as um, some uh, extra AD for you. And then the last three items are kind of variable. So, as a default, um, I have Shield Bow. Um, here gives you a decent stat line and of course gives you that shield and extra physical vamp when you proc it. Um, Infinity H for the AD and the increased crit damage and of course more reminder for the armor pen as well as the Grievous Wounds. Now you can swap the order around so I, you can for example go for something like this where you go for shield bow last. You could go for something like this um, as well. You could just you know mix things up around and uh, you also have a couple of alternative item options. So the first uh, item option you have is uh, Bork. So Bork of course we know is a very strong on hit item which allows you to do percent health damage. Now this is very useful if you're against a very very tanky team uh, in terms of health that is. So for example you see some heart steel on the enemy, heart steals on the enemy team or like people who are just tanky and building health in general, Bork is really good. And technically there is a full tank shredder kind of ash build which is, is going to look something like this. It's, it's, it's a little bit whack but um, you actually can go for something like this. This is like the full tank shredder um, um, ash build where you have your core, two core items, and then you go into all the anti-tank items. You have, of course, more reminder for the armor pen as well as the the uh, the crit. You have your Bork for the percent health damage, and you have your Black Cleaver for the for the armor shred, which of course on Ash actually procs instantly in one auto attack if you're Q, if you have your Q activated. So with this kind of build, that absolutely no tank can survive you. Uh, of course, the order also can be swapped around, like depending on what you need and when you need it. Uh, but yeah, that is the a option that you have. Of course, you don't go for that every match, or you don't even go for it very often. Uh, because you're rarely going to be in that kind of situation, but I'm just um, letting you guys know that that is, of course, an option. Now, of course, for the runes, is going to be lethal tempo for the attack speed as well as the bonus range. Now, Ash already has one of the longest ranges in the game, and this is only going to help her even more. Brutal, because obviously we auto attack quite a bit. Giant Slayer, uh, of course, um, still the highest value rune here, even after the the um, the rework to it, I guess you could say. And here we go for the attack speed, because now you know we do have attack speed here and here, but um, you know we do already have a decent amount of uh, Omni Vamp and slash healing, so Alacrity is just going to be better. And of course, we have Bone Plating here uh, for the defensive capabilities. And you know, for the summoner spells, you want to go for Flash together with Ghost. Majority of the time, rare instances, you do uh, can spec into a getting an exhaust if there's a lot of assassins or whatnot on the enemy team. But all that said, let's jump into talking about the actual gameplay. Okay, so now we're moving on to the gameplay itself. Now, of course, I do think Ash is a really, really strong champion. I will be actually coming up with a tier list, um, you know, for ADCs as well as, of course, all of the other roles pretty soon. But, you know, we still want to hang on tight for a little bit just to kind of see how Redemption um, kind of really changes the meta, um, you know, if it changes anything else, how impactful little tempo changes are, etc, etc. So we are kind of just waiting just a little bit before we release a tier list, but it's going to be coming really soon. So here we have a Nami with us. 
um, which uh, is going to give us a pretty strong poke lane. Now, Caitlyn herself is a very strong poker. However, Nautilus is kind of wanting to all in. So, of course, the enemy team very, very strong all in with Nautilus's lockdown into Caitlyn's uh, combo. So you have to watch out for that. But you know, in a in a uh, situation where Nautilus doesn't engage, uh, me and Kate, uh, me and Nami, sorry, should be able to out poke. Um, you know, the two of them, so we should be fine within that respect. So here, um, you know, Caitlyn of course does have longer range than Ash, just by a little bit, just by a margin, which is why Ash is generally a good matchup into Caitlyn, because Caitlyn can abuse her range a little bit less, and it is a matchup that I opt into quite often. Uh, as you guys saw, can probably tell if you've been watching my videos regularly, um, you know, that, um, you know, we do, uh, of course, play into Caitlyn quite often. And uh, here, Nautilus goes in. Uh, you can see that when he goes in, I'm taking a bunch of damage, and that's pretty much how the matchup works. However, thankfully for us, we do have sustain with the Nami, so Nami can actually heal me back up. So I don't necessarily uh, have to recall uh, right at this moment. However, obviously at this kind of HP, if I get engaged on by Nautilus, I'm probably dead. You can see he's even trying to engage on me under the tower, uh, is how much he really wants to kill me. But now you can see a full wave has crashed into my tower. I'm trying to CS under tower, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. We do get a uh, majority of, uh, not even majority, half of the CS. Not That's not the majority, but... Yeah, so here Nautilus looking for an engage again at the tip of the bush. Obviously, we have that bush warded to ensure that we can see him. Um, you see where he's coming from. Um, he tries to get the engage on me under tower. Honestly, I actually think I should have let him hit me, because at this kind of HP under tower, he, if he hits me, he technically CCs himself as well, because he's going to pull himself towards me. This is going to allow Nami to bubble me, which is going to bubble Nautilus under tower, and I believe the Nautilus straight up dies. So I think I made a mistake there by dodging the hook, which is something uh, which is something really weird to say, but I think that Nautilus is trolling by trying to hook me under the tower. And I also have both of my summoner spells, uh, whereas he doesn't even have flash anymore, so... Uh, I think if he hooks me there, he straight up just dies. So, so yeah, uh, Nautilus, you can see, is a really, really aggressive player. Uh, but at this point, uh, it's a good time to, of course, reset and uh, get some items. Of course, completing our boots as our first item. Looks like the enemy bot lane has done the same. And here, I'm a couple of gold away from getting a longsword. So I'm going to wait in base for a couple of seconds, which is going to delay my tempo a little bit. But we do get that longsword. Now, it appears that Caitlyn has never backed. So she simply just walked away. Um, you know, because uh, she still only has a longsword, so she clearly did, cl clearly did not back. But we're now racing back to the lane to try to help out our Nami. Um, also, of course, Nami got a little bit of solo XP, so she's now quite far ahead of us in terms of XP. She is, she's about to hit level 5 right here, uh, whereas I'm still at the high end of level 4. So I'm just quickly farming uh, the last of these minions. This is going to give me level 5 in case a fight breaks out. I, you know, I have my, my stun ready to go, popping the uh, hawk shot to kind of check. Um, if Warwick might be in that side of the jungle, it turns out um, the buff is not there, so maybe he is clearing the other side right now. But of course, we're not uh, completely 100% sure. So here I'm just procking the Caitlyn trap because I know she's actually not here. Um, this is, of course, going to uh, just remove that annoying trap, which could matter later on. Just checking the bush for Nautilus. Nautilus is uh, coming in from the riverside. Caitlyn's now off the reset, now back into the lane. Has a dagger advantage against us, of course, from backing later than us. And now it's now level 5, the slow comes in, he pops the pops the ulti into the full combo, Nami goes in with the bubble as well as the wave as well, Caitlyn get, gets CC for a good duration. I managed to ult the Caitlyn, and Caitlyn's now really low, has to flash away, but now I'm 1 HP. Um, Nami manages to block for me, but Nami's now getting CC'd herself, in a little bit of trouble. And here, I barely actually survived the Caitlyn Q, uh, just by a sliver, I probably should have died there, I shouldn't have walked a step back, I should have just been running away straight up. Uh, after Nami already died to keep me alive. Uh, thankfully though, I was not punished, which, uh, yeah, you know, definitely made a mistake uh, in the in the uh, micro-movements there, but thankfully we stay alive um, and uh, we're, we live to see another day. Now, uh, obviously with that kill, Caitlyn is now uh, having a decent lead, and, uh, you know, we never want to give Caitlyn a lead because Caitlyn is one of those champions that can take a mile when you give them an inch. Uh, and in fact, she's now actually rotating to mid lane um, to uh, get another kill uh, onto, I believe, the, the Kindred perhaps. And uh, on the top lane, you can see we have a Jin top uh, versus Darius. And he did start the game pretty well with two kills onto the Darius, but now, <laughs> now it's a funny situation. Nautilus ults us, misses the hook, flashes in for the root, 
and uh, Nami hits the wave onto three people who are who have lined up, and somehow we actually walk out of that situation where we got pincered in by Nautilus on one side and the Warwick Caitlyn on the other side. We walk out with basically full health, and Nami eats the fruit and is basically back at full health as well. Now this was just mind-boggling to me because the moment I saw Nautilus after I wore it, and then I saw Warwick and Caitlyn, I was like, "Yeah, we know we're dead. We kind of mispositioned completely." But then, we just walk straight on out, uh, only really costing us the, the Nami ult and a, a flash from Nami as well. But um, personally, I didn't actually even use any sums. I, I simply just walked out of the situation, so that was, uh, that was pretty funny. Um, Nautilus has been posturing here to, to try to, to get us, but uh, not quite working. Again, I'm going to proc the Caitlyn trap because she's out of range to attack me from where she is right now. Now, Kindred is coming in onto the Caitlyn, pops the E onto her for the slow. I actually get the the uh, ult threading the needle there, follow up into the, the bubble and we're actually mowing down the Caitlyn who is now really really low now. For some reason Kindred popped the E onto the Caitlyn but just chose to give up the chase and that basically led to me wasting my ult onto the Caitlyn because obviously without Kindred we don't have enough damage to kill her off but if Kindred just helped out there with like two auto attacks she would have just died. So that was a little bit annoying um, uh, what just happened there because Kindred could have ju just helped us and we could have just killed Caitlyn together, but instead Caitlyn actually survives, which should never be the case. Now, I'm actually popping the spooky ghost. Uh, we see that Caitlyn is actually still in lane, and for some reason, the Kindred is not going between towers to go onto the Caitlyn, but she's just going to get kited by Caitlyn. Nautilus actually comes in, uh, ults the, the Kindred, and Kindred has to pop her ult out herself, but it's only going to delay the inevitable, and Kindred does end up just dying instead of actually helping us get the kill onto the Caitlyn. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of horrible. Caitlyn now has a full completed item of the the uh, Storm Razor, and uh, she's only you know continuing to snowball now. I'm I'm like 100 gold plus away from getting my my bork uh, not bork my my bloodthirster. So at this point, um, I'm just gonna stay for another wave and uh, complete um, the bloodthirster when I uh, back instead of just backing and getting components. Now Nautilus flashes in. Uh, I'm gonna have to flash as well just in case he gets in the the hook or the 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 ulti. Um, you know. Uh, which I thought he had an ulti there, but turns out he didn't. So flash for flash trade, which is a very good trade for Nautilus because he does have hex flash, so that's a very good trade. Nautilus does the thing where he hooks me under tower again. Uh, I'm just gonna ult him in the face, and he's tanking two tower shots. Um, he does have aftershock, though, so he's pretty tanky. Uh, he, he nearly dies, but unfortunately I don't have flash because obviously I just flashed just now. So I'm gonna have to walk the long way around, and now Caitlyn has joined up. Uh, doesn't look like we really win this fight anymore, so we're now gonna have to run away, hightail it out of there. And uh, yeah, so Nautilus, if he didn't have Aftershock, he would have definitely died there, but his, his Aftershock saved his life. And uh, we are able to back and complete our Bloodthirster. So yeah, I'm not sure why Nautilus is trying to engage on us under tower, but that definitely doesn't seem like a good idea. Uh, and Caitlyn eventually now manages to get the entire tower. She's now about 1k gold ahead of me, which is of course very bad news. Uh, for us, we're not really behind though in the sense that we are 0, zero and 0, we haven't really been dying, it's just that the, all the plates we've been losing to Caitlyn as well as the the kills that she got onto, uh, onto uh, the Nami just now as well as I believe the assist on the Kindred kill in the river is getting her a hit. Now here they have left the tower relatively unattended so I'm trying to actually get the tower but Nautilus comes in with an ult, I'm just gonna walk away, Nautilus hex flashes forward, I slow him down with the with the uh, W and he doesn't manage to get the hook. Now uh, Warwick is in our jungle here, getting marked by Kindred so we can have vision on him. We're trying to walk away. Uh, if Warwick ults in there, it's kind of int because obviously we have 3v1 three, three, three on him there. We ults the Nami here which is again doesn't really make a lot of sense. Nami wave knocks up 2 and uh, Warwick is trying to get the blue buff. Lux eventually gets the blue buff. I get the ulti onto the Warwick. Lux ult hits onto the Warwick and Kindred is going in, gets the shutdown onto the Warwick and we're now just pelting the Nautilus with these arrows. Now Caitlyn uh, looks like she has escaped. Now I thought that she walked back to her tower and escaped but somehow uh, Kindred wards here and spots the Caitlyn recalling so Caitlyn is gonna end up dying as well so uh, out off of this entire play we end up getting three assists and we're, we're uh, kind of I wouldn't say back in the game but we, we you know we got much needed gold you can see that we are not very high on gold compared to literally anyone else in, uh, in the game we're actually quite behind in gold versus the entire enemy team, like we barely have more gold than Nautilus. And uh, obviously it's not from dying, it's, it's uh, just from the fact that Caitlyn has been you know, doing a lot of damage to me and I can't really secure all of the minions, all of the CS. I haven't been able to CS very well uh, in this game, so I'm, I'm you know, slowly losing, losing gold. 
Um, now I'm, I'm gonna go bot to cover though, and I spawn a fight going on in mid, so I'm kiting, kiting the camp as I'm rotating to mid. But as I reach there, I realize it's too late. Darius has a triple kill and he has reset. Jin gets ulted and somehow opens his ult as the Nautilus ult is traveling to him, which obviously lets the Nautilus ult instantly cancel his ult, which, yeah, very, very, very poor micro from the Jin there. I'm not sure what the plan was there. But um, enemy team secure the second dragon off the back of, um, you know, that, that uh, play that killed three people. Now the issue is, um, on the enemy team, they have a number of tanks. So you can see Darius is a relatively tanky champ. He has that cleaver building now into a Death's Dance based on the island components he has. Warwick has a Triforce already. And Nautilus is clearly building tank. He has a Giant's Belt and a Bramble Vest in his inventory. So three tanks, or three tanky champions on the enemy team. Um, and it's going to be Ocean Soul. Now Ocean Soul is generally not a very good soul. Obviously the best one is Infernal, probably followed by by um, the Ice Drake. But uh, Ocean Soul is actually very good into teams with tanks because obviously the regeneration is based on health and tanks have more health which means they get more regeneration which obviously means Ocean Soul is actually pretty good on a tanky team which is exactly what the team has. So we really need to try to deny that last dragon to prevent them from getting that. And uh, as a matter of fact, in this particular game, uh, before we get into that, Nautilus goes in uh, again, get CC under tower. I stun him under tower as well. This time, he's gonna have a much harder time escaping. We auto him down. He goes down. Now we're in a, in a f fight versus Caitlyn. I flash away from the zigzag, but Caitlyn out is able to tank me. No one is able to block for me, and I do end up dying. Uh, unfortunately, uh, but yeah. So in, in fact, in this match, after going for our uh, runans, I think I'm actually going to go for a Bork because Bork has such high value in this match, being able to shred through Darius Warwick as well as. Nautilus, uh, it doesn't make sense not to go for it this match, and it doesn't make sense to not go for it early in this match. Like, like compared to like uh, IE, uh, you know, Shield Bow, or even Mole Reminder, uh, Bork is just the best item because Bork uh, counters health, and enemy team has a decent amount of health. You can see Heart Steel on Nautilus, you can see uh, Triforce as well as Black Cleaver on the top jungle of the enemy team. So, Bork is definitely the way to go here. Into the Mole Reminder, because now Darius has that armor on the on the uh, death stance and you can see Nautilus has a Bramble vest and armor boots you know things like that so definitely that's going to be the way to go in terms of itemization Kindred here just gets caught again um, you know have to pull up that question mark emote uh, right there and we complete our runans now we really desperately need the bark into the mole reminder at this point now look at the zig's damage by the way i step into into a couple of mines i take a lot of damage into the into the alt as well as the q i need to get one shot 100 to zero just from all of zig's spells ouchies so we're gonna have to run all the way back to the base uh, you know from the inhibitor tower and just restore all of our health here Thankfully, we have Nami with the locket and the heal. I actually don't think I would die even even if that wasn't the case because I think that the, the healing I got off of the minions was actually enough to save my own life. Uh, but of course, this Ziggs is becoming a problem. We gotta shut him down. So he's overextending a little bit. Uh, of course, we're at so We have pick potential with the arrow. Boom, in arrow into the uh, full Nami combo. Ziggs flashes, but he obviously can't run away from a Ash that obviously can slow, uh, slow him down. We also pop the ghost just for good measure and ensure he cannot get away. And uh, we do get the shutdown onto the Ziggs and remove him from the map. Now on the bot side, Caitlyn and Darius are really overextended. We can maybe make a rotation here. Uh, Caitlyn is, is getting caught. Darius getting caught as well. Full combo by the Lux. Darius taking a ton of damage. Has to flash out of the Lux. Oh, now here you can see one of the things you can do versus the TX, which is when you are playing a lethal tempo champion, you can actually auto the TX from range to stack the lethal tempo, which is exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm 4 stacks lethal tempo here on the TX, 5 stacks lethal tempo here on the TX, and yeah, I'm really close to getting full stacks onto, onto the, the uh, lethal tempo. So here, here at this point, I get full stack lethal tempo with the last auto onto the, the Caitlyn, uh, and we do end up killing her. Now Warwick is now running for the hills because he's been o uh, overextending to get the inhib, which he did get. Uh, but now he's obviously uh, not where he wants to be and he has to hightail it out of there. Um, now we're of course going to build into Borg, so getting the, the recurve bow in and into the longsword. TX is trying to take down the inhibitor turret. And uh, we're just again autoing the T-Hex to just stack up Lethal Tempo and we're getting a lot of stack. Darius comes in uh, from the side and tries to go in on me. I'm just going to stun him under the tower into Nami Bubble. He gets, he gets killed. Warwick tanks the tower because there's no minions. He goes down as well. And now I'm trying to stop Ziggs from pushing here. Uh, but now Ziggs is getting a lot of damage. Until you one more Q, I'm gonna, obviously going to die. So I have to pop the ghost, uh, play the dodge game, uh, life stealing a little bit from him. Now my team is here to back me up. So I'm just going to walk away and sure Ziggs cannot trade a kill onto me and life steal off the minions while I'm at it. And uh, Kindred finishes off the kill onto Ziggs. So Ziggs definitely got a lot, uh, uh, 
a tad too greedy for the kill on me there and um, does end up getting punished for it. So here Brock completed. So this is going to help me to of course kill all of the tanky champions um, on the enemy team. You know, all three of them is going to, to feel the pain of the Bork. Um, this is, this uh, itemization choice is going to increase my damage tremendously against this particular team. And of course, next item is going to be more reminders to cut healing and, you know, of course, counter the armor that they are building. Lux picks up a double here. Nami and Lux are both pretty low though. Warwick is going in with the ulti. Gets the kill onto Lux. Darius is now here. He's pretty fed as well. Now, Warwick and Darius, as well as Ziggs, are really fed on the enemy team. Of course, Caitlyn's doing pretty well as well, but she's kind of in that mid-game power trough where she's weaker than other ADCs, including Ash. So we are actually stronger than Caitlyn right now because Caitlyn did not get fed enough. Now here, Darius gets caught, gets chain CC. Um, here, I'm just slowing him down. He's getting kited to death because uh, Ash slows are insane. He cannot do a thing. Uh, here, Zix uh, is obviously a problem. I'm trying to escape from him. Warwick uh, gets knocked out by Nami and gets CC'd and does end up dying to Jin. Now, both junglers are dead and obviously this is the last dragon which I mentioned that we wanted the Nai to deny the Ocean Dragon. So, however, with both junglers dead, I think the biggest threat to steal the dragon is going to be Ziggs, either with just a straight up Q or with his ulti. So, it's not very wise for us to start the dragon because we don't really have bursts that we can use to secure the dragon. Um, although we do have Jin's fourth shot, but you know, that of course requires Jin to execute it properly and of course, Executing a Jin 4th shot on Dragon is way harder than executing a Ziggs Q or a Ziggs ult onto Dragon, so we can't really take that risk of giving them a free Dragon. Here I get Q, uh, excuse me, I get QSS as well as the Last Whisper. Enemy team is on the Dragon, and I don't think we can really stop them. Actually, Nautilus and uh, Nautilus and Caitlyn are not on the Dragon, so maybe they are not actually on the Dragon. Uh, but here we are trying to make our way toward the Dragon Pit to see if we can do anything. But Kindred is now on the wrong side of the map, so. Uh, Really hard to, to contest this dragon here because Kindred is literally not with us. We don't have a smite. Uh, Lux is now going to the other side of the map. Uh, although it doesn't look like the enemy team is doing dragon, only Caitlyn is missing. So Caitlyn might be doing dragon alone. Uh, Darius pops the ghost and as well as the the uh, Righteous Glory. I have to pop the ghost myself. I stun him, kite him down. Now Caitlyn is in trouble. I'm flashing over trying to, trying to kill her but she has flash. Now I'm trying to kill Zix. Zix runs into my team. Pops the stasis on 1 HP and obviously he's going to die. Now Caitlyn's running. Uh, up straight towards the dragon apparently so she might be doing the dragon together with the warwick i suspect that she is we actually spot them and they do actually end up getting the ocean soul unfortunately so we were not able to deny that soul that's really good for the enemy team which is of course a a tragedy to say the least now elder dragon itself is going to be up in 20 seconds and we really need our jungler to actually be on the ball and actually you know uh, help out with the elder dragon because so far um, not only is she feeding she's 2 and 9, but also she hasn't really been um, you know, on, on objectives, which obviously is part of the job of being a jungler. Um, now I'm 6, 1 and 7, I am pretty fed. Um, in fact, I'm the most fed person in the game. And you can see that now with the Bork, as well as the Mole Reminder components, we are actually kind of countering um, the, the tanks on enemy team. So we're actually in a very dominant um, position, so we, are, we need to take advantage of that, of that. Baron and Elder are both up, so we're really trying to reach there. Um, and help our team. So here you can see we are taking them down one by one. Nautilus has nowhere to run. And you can see we are doing a lot of damage to him because of the, the, the items that we have. Now we're going to quickly go and catch Caitlyn with that arrow and let our team finish her off. Obviously we don't want to walk all the way around um, to, to get that kill. So we're going to let our team sell, sell that. And now we are trying to get the Elder before anyone on the enemy team respawns. Um, whole enemy team is dead. Um, so this is a free Elder as long as we can get can get it. But you see the problem which is that the, there is a huge wave at top that could end the game for, for the enemy team. Thankfully the inhib actually respawns and our wave actually comes in. So the minions are getting delayed by the inhib as well as the minions. But now we have to quickly back and actually stop the minions from ending the game. So we uh, complete our recall, rush out to actually stop the the, the minions or rather we don't because our team is uh, is doing that and we need to push out that bot wave now somehow they both clear the wave and they don't push out further I have to ping it so that Jin is able to go ahead and do that now I'm coming toward the Baron area because obviously with Elder we want to look for a, a Baron because uh, forcing the enemy team to fight with us there is gonna you know make them fight into Elder team which is obviously not very advisable now the wave uh, on the top side is pushing in again so we want to do El Baron quickly if we want to do it at all because otherwise, it's going to be really, really difficult. The enemy team just needs to stop our back and the minion wave can handle handle the situation. Now here, Darius is running straight in. Nautilus actually has a flank 
Um, Elder is pop popping though and I'm getting CC for days. Fortunately, I have my QSS. I get a double, Lux gets a double, and Zix unfortunately is able to finish me off. I believe with Scorch. Um, so Zix is the last man standing and we really need to back to get to get the, the wave. So here I'm pinging the wave. I need to ping my team off the Baron because Zix just needs to stop the backs and um, the, the minions is going to end the game now. Zix actually dies to the Jin, but you can see I'm pinging. I'm pinging the wave non-stop because we need to clear that wave and uh, Nami looks like she's backing. Lux and Jin now finally get the memo. The wave is killing the base and uh, finally someone's actually paying attention and they're going to back. But you can see by this time the, the, the game is almost over uh, just from the minions. Like our Nexus is on 1000 HP and in the meanwhile Kindred and Nami are still trying to two-man the Baron which I'm not sure why because obviously Kindred doesn't have damage. She gets executed by the Baron. She's 2 and 11. Obviously has no damage to do the Baron and nearly gets Nami killed as well. So uh, thankfully it's not a free leash for the enemy team or anything like that. But yeah, that was just stupid. Like now Kindred is dead and now the enemy team is looking for Baron. Obviously because we don't have a jungle. Jin is now on the other side of the map. And uh, not a lot that I can really do here. I don't want to face check into the Baron. So I'm just going to take the red buff. Which is pretty much all I can really do here. And I do believe the enemy team is actually taking the Baron. Nautilus is there to zone us off. Lux and Nami are contesting. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do anything to help. Now, um, the, the Baron is pretty low, and uh, Warwick actually dies, so I'm actually going to flash over, auto the Baron, and secure the Baron. And uh, we get the Baron, now Darius is now stuck in No Man's Land. We know that even though he is he was very fat at the beginning of the game, he has just been getting hardcore kited because of um, Ash's insane slows. And he goes down as well. Now we have the Baron, Ziggs and Nautilus are the only two people actually alive. And now we back, complete our IE last item, and we're actually now full build. Um, so we could of course go for a shield bow instead of an IE here as well, but at this point I just want to have the, the damage and I, I'm not, I don't really think uh, I'm getting bursted down except from, from Ziggs, which uh, is a little bit of a problem. I get the cross map arrow onto him, I expect my team to one shot him, but nope, Lux is not in time to get the root down, so Ziggs actually survives, which is really really bad, which means we can't end the game because Ziggs wave clear is too insane. We actually get the, the mid lane tower, and now I'm pinging to go for a bot lane tower, but as usual, um, you know, uh, players are just running down mid for no good reason. We already have the mid lane tower. Why is the TX still in mid lane? So I'm gonna have to do it myself. Um, Darius for some reason tries to go on me. I go unstoppable with my QSS so he can hook me. He tries to his best but obviously he's just gonna die because yeah, because Darius can't kill Ash um, in this particular state. I get hooked in by Nautilus. I get a double onto the Warwick. I'm just life stealing off the Nautilus at this point and um, and uh, now I'm gonna go to the minions and life steal. So just look at how much life steal we have of the minions here. So you see two auto attacks, we're back to half health. Three auto attacks, we're almost full health. Next minion wave is here, means we're gonna be full health off of the minion wave. So we don't even have to back nothing like that. And then we're gonna, gonna secure the inhib here. So now, um, Ziggs as well as the bot lane are alive. And that's a little bit of a problem. I do wanna be a little bit cautious here. We know Nautilus doesn't have ult, so we can step up a little bit. He can uh, hook us through the wall. Um, and yeah, so here Ziggs is really the main problem because he can easily clear the wave. Uh, we're trying to get something done, but it's really, really difficult. And you can see that the top lane wave is pushed in again. So here at this point, I'm pinging. Not, actually, I'm actually not pinging, but I'm pinging the wave now. You can see I'm pinging the wave. Thankfully, the enemy team doesn't chase us. Now, if the enemy team here chased us and stopped us from backing, there's a chance that the, the minion wave would be able to end the game. Actually, a very good chance that, that that would be the case. Now, the second elder is actually up. So we are we are trying to to clear out this this elder. Uh, not clear this elder, clear out this wave. Push up the wave to a point where it's not going to threaten to end the game and go for Elder. Now the enemy team is now stuck in a similar position because our bot lane wave is pushing in insanely uh, far in uh, as the wave are, is going to stack up and they have to contest Elder. So the enemy team is now stuck in a very sticky situation that we kind of found ourselves in with the Baron just now. So here um, the enemy team and Darius decides to, to engage in. I'm going to stun him up. Uh, we're going to kill him as well as the Warwick and at this point the Elder should be ours. Ziggs you can see is busy clearing the wave. Nautilus and uh, and the Caitlyn are the only ones contesting here. Uh, in fact Nautilus isn't even so I'm going to flash over and just kill the Caitlyn. Ziggs is now here but not a lot he can do. I'm not sure where Nautilus is in this entire situation but now with the Elder secured uh, we might be able to actually end the game here. Now the issue is that even with Elder you can see Ziggs is just poking us from afar. He nearly one shots me. I'm not nearly one shots me but he does more than half my HP with just one Q. So I'm gonna go here get this red buff and uh, honestly I think at this point the smartest thing to do is actually to just go get Baron. Use Baron to push out the top wave, get the top um, in the hip and maybe end the game from there or at the minimum 
prevent the super minion waves from consistently threatening to end the game uh, via the top lane. So here you can see me and Nami are going to go two men the Baron. Now, un unlike the Kindred, I have damage, so I'm actually going to shred the Baron here with my with my Bor uh, Kindred. Actually, comes over to help, so which is uh, actually Jin comes over to help. Sorry, which is which is really good. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just going to burst down the Baron like so, and then we're going to reset. And hopefully use the Baron to uh, actually we're not gonna reset personally because we are of course we're full build so we have no reason to reset. We can just life steal off the minions to get our HP back up. And uh, huge Ziggs bomb does a decent amount of damage onto me, but I think that's a waste because I can just life steal it back up and uh, it's very used to clear minions honestly. So now thankfully Jin has the wherewithal to bring the TX up top to clear the wave there. So now all we need to do is follow the TX in the top lane and push into the TX because the other lanes are going to push naturally just based off the double stack wave so the enemy team is either going to be forced to clear wave on the other lanes or for us to try to stop us with the T -hex, uh, TX party I guess you could call it uh, in the top lane so three of them are going mid Lux actually kills the Darius and gets collapsed on three pe uh, by three people um, Warwick tries to go in onto the three of us here and just dies now I missed the error on Zig somehow unfortunately uh, but at this point with Elder with Baron we have insane damage you can see here, we're attacking all three of them at once. Um, Elder about to proc on Caitlyn, down she goes. Um, Zig's about to get his GA proc as well. Nautilus actually hooks me in and kills me, but uh, by this time, the game is already won. So, uh, I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and goodbye.